Good morning. My name is Susan Yost, and I'm with Intel. I'm a product marketing manager in the Next Network and Edge Computing uh, Division. And today I'm here to talk to you briefly about modular systems at the edge. So let's take a look at why we want modular standards, that why they might be important to the edge, how we could design a modular architecture that could come together, to sh and then we'll come together to show you a system that we've designed using modular elements for a VRAN DU that we did in collaboration with Foxconn Industrial Internet, and it's specifically for VRAN DU. So here we see the breadth of computing solutions that we're all familiar with. Over the past two years, the OCP DCMHS, which stands for Data Center Modular Hardware Systems project, a subproject under the server project, had came together to define specifications for modular architecture for the far right in the data center and the cloud. More and more workloads, however, are forcing um, applications to be implemented into the edge towards the middle of the breadth of computing. Um, so how would, we, how would we design a similar system, a similar modular system for the edge that, um, that provides low latency, higher bandwidth, security, management, all the connectivity in the edge, and of course it has to be AI ready. But there's challenges at the edge. When we look at the edge, it really spreads out to a wide variety of capabilities and workloads that need to be distributed from the data center on out. Now, we define the, the, these modular edge systems to start in the near edge, close to the data center, with standard systems, standard temperature, pretty much the standard size of the rack mount servers. As we move across to the, to the left, we see where mid-edge and far-edge start to bring in more and more different capabilities, but different form factor requirements as well, as well as being, needing to be able to support a variety of locations and environments which, you know, different uh, temperatures and different sizes. But it doesn't go all the way. We don't consider it going all the way to the far, far right or far left, excuse me, which um, it needs to be very, very specific for customer premise equipment. So for us, the area in green is the areas of focus for, for this talk and for how we want to treat modular systems in this next step of bringing modularity to servers. Um, just to look at it a little bit more detail, we see where, from a size perspective, the mid-edge takes us down to around 430 to 480 millimeters, but the, going into the far edge, we need systems as small as 310 millimeters to be able to be installed on, on um, cellular telephone poles or be installed in the base system. And so it, it creates a, a much more complex design problem with thermal, cabling, and power solutions. And today, in addition, OEMs address this with their own unique solutions. So how would we bring what we learned in DCMHS to the edge? So what we did in DCMHS um, is we created building blocks for the, what we call building blocks or elements to bring together um, be able to create a variety of solutions. So if we apply that to edge, we can reuse and leverage much of what we did in DCMHS, but we'd have to change probably and right size a couple of modules. For example, most importantly, what we call the host compute module or the HPM. The module would have to be shorter in depth so we can, so we can apply it to the short, uh, the, the far edge requirements and we need to support you know, AC and DC, and we need to take a look at the, the, um, the uh, management solution, the board management solution as well. But once we resize those, we can, just like we do in DCMHS, we can create a variety of solutions 
from the, the systems that we see out towards the IoT, all the way up to you know, VRAN and on up to multi-axis computing. So what we see with modularity, the advantages we see with modularity are reduced development um, investment, the um, improved time to market because instead of creating monolithic boards, you're now developing a system based on building blocks, put them together and, and then validate that system and concentrate on the entire and dif differentiate and concentrate on the platform, the middleware and the software. Um, and even more importantly, it provides an opportunity to reuse some of these elements from generation to generation, which improves sustainability because when you just replace the HPM, then you can reuse all the other parts for at least two generations. So, you know, it really can improve the environment. So an example of what we did with Foxconn Industrial Internet is this system here and we're showing it over in the Experience Center. We, working in collaboration with them, we created this short box, the, the, um, the HPM itself that you can see here you know, in the center with the CPU on it is uh, 295 millimeters by 260 millimeters so it, so it can meet that short edge requirement of only 310 millimeter box and then we, on this particular system, of course, we're using a, a fourth generation Intel Xeon processor, which has a VRAN boost built in. And then to optimize the system, instead of having a NIC or N multiple NIC cards coming out the front, we took three uh, Ethernet, Intel Ethernet controllers that are 100 gig each and put them right on the base of the motherboard that you see here or the front of the system. With the, with, the connect, with the connections, and then we put a fourth controller on a sidecar off to the one side to allow for more flexibility, and in this case, be able to support 400 gig. We also have, took um, the GNS module, we, keep, we instead of putting it down on the board, we made it a separate module over here on the left. And th that again allows for flexibility, so you could offer different GNSS the solutions, um, and to keep that depth short, we took the DC SCM 2.0 module and layered it on top of the board with a channel connector. So instead of it, again, making it longer and having the, the plane be too long for this size system, we, we um, stacked it. Now, um, in addition, we support AC and DC to give people flexibility. And we used the MXIO connector at the top. We put in two MXIO connectors so people could create um, a 2U system and add other, more PCIe cards um, than storage so you can create multiple configurations, not just for VRAN DUs, but for things like CDN and other applications. And finally, there, there is a PCI riser card that can also be uh, layered on top of that side card. So you do get a PCI low profile by 16 card in a one use system. So we're showing this um, just back here in the experience center. And um, we also, our, our partners in the booth um, are uh, from Meta. They have an um, Evenstar modular system for 5G Open RAN and they're coming up next to, to talk about that. So thanks for your time, and please come by and, and talk to us. Thank you.